guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Kiana and I do a lot of sewing and fashion videos. And today I have a pattern and tutorial on a cowl dress. You just saw the dress in multiple variations in the intro and that's what I'm most excited about is how many variations there are in this pattern. So I have a long option, a midi option, and a mini option. So that way you can use one pattern for various things like a black tie event dress, a wedding guest dress, a homecoming dress, a prom dress. It just has a lot of variations and not only variations with the length, but also variations with the straps. You could do cross back, halter back, a halter bow back. I love the halter big bow back, gorgeous. And I decided to create this pattern because I love cowl dresses. I think they look gorgeous on everyone, but with a lot of cowl slip dresses, you're really missing that waist definition. So I took the time and I patterned it very carefully so that we could still have that cowl and fluidity and the drape, but also have a really nice waist definition. So if you're interested in seeing how I patterned this, go check out my video from last week. But if you would just like to buy the pattern for this, it is the first link down below and it's on my Etsy. And you guys know I love giving a discount to those of you who are early to my videos. So if you use the code cowl dress, you will get 30% off until tomorrow at midnight. And to see all the supplies you need for this project, that's also in the first link down below, and all the equipment and other stuff I use for this project, you can see that in this video description. So I hope you guys enjoy. I'm going to stop talking. Let's get into the tutorial. All right, so first you're gonna to wanna to print out your pattern, of course, but please make sure you've read this disclaimer at the bottom of the page. Otherwise, you're gonna end up printing the pattern twice. The first part of the pattern is the pattern with no slit. The second part is the pattern with a slit. You do not wanna waste 50 sheets of paper, so please make sure you read that. Next up, make sure you've printed out 100% scale and that you've used the correct file that corresponds with your paper size. Then just place your pieces of paper next to each other without overlapping. If you don't have borderless printing, it might not go to the end of the page, but that's fine as long as you print it at 100% scale. Make sure you've lined up those diamonds at the intersections of each page, and then you tape everything together. I love to use cardstock and packing tape. It just makes for a really nice pattern that's gonna last you a long time. Then refer to the instruction pamphlet to figure out what size you wanna create. I'm creating a US size 2, so I'm just cutting on that corresponding line. Also, now's the time to figure out if you want to cut out a mini, midi, or maxi dress. Just cut out all of your pattern pieces, and then you are ready to cut out your fabric. When you are cutting out your fabric, make sure you pay attention to your green line, because the two front bodice pieces, the front bodice and the front facing, are cut out on the bias. So just make sure that your green line is going parallel to the selvage of your fabric. Then all of your other pieces are going to be cut out on the lengthwise grain. Also make sure you're paying attention to all of your notches. So anytime you see a black triangle, just give in a little tiny clip into the fabric. Don't go past the seam allowance. These notches are just going to make your life a little bit easier later on when you're lining things up. For the straps, we have three options. I have a regular crisscross back. I have a halter thin spaghetti strap, and then I have a halter bow strap, which I personally am obsessed with that big bow, but decide on one of those three straps and then cut out the fabric. Now moving on to the fun part, sewing. And you're gonna see me sew with two different fabrics. It's because I'm showing you how to make two different dresses with variations. So first off, we're gonna start with the bodice and we're going to connect the front and back bodice together at the side seam. I prefer to sew at the right side seam so that I can place my zipper on the left side seam, but it's really up to you. And when I say right side seam, I mean the right side of the dress when you're wearing it. Now grab your facing pieces and sew that at the opposite side seam that you're sewing the bodice at. A good way to make sure you're doing this right is just to line them up next to each other and making sure that you're sewing it at the opposite side seams. And make sure when you're sewing this that you're not accidentally stretching the seams. And then go ahead and serge that seam. If you don't have a serger, you can finish that seam off however you'd like. Moving on to the skirt, we're going to tackle the slit first. If you're not creating a slit, then you can skip to the next part. First though, we wanna serge or finish the edges where the slit will be. So on both front pieces where the slit is, you're just gonna serge down that entire edge. Now we're going to sew from the waistline to where the notch for the slit is going to be. If you want your slit to be a little lower or higher, make that adjustment now. Then we're gonna press this entire seam open. So we're gonna press where we just sewed, but we're also going to continue down the slit and press that seam allowance open half an inch. 
Then we're going to also turn under that seam allowance where the open slit is another quarter inch so that it's folded twice and that serged edge is hidden inside the fold. Then we're just going to top stitch all of that seam allowance in place. So we're just going to sew all the way around that slit trying to get as close to the edge of the fold as we can. Now that the slit's done, we're ready to bring in the back of the skirt. So just place the back of the skirt onto the front of the skirt, right sides together, and we're going to sew along the right side seam. Again, the right side seam when you're wearing the dress. And then just serge that seam to finish it. Now we're going to place the bodice to the skirt at the waistline, right sides together, and then just pin that in place along the waistline. Make sure that your side seams match up as well. Then you're just gonna sew and serge this. Now it's almost time to install the zipper, but before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and serge all the way down those side seams that are left unsewn. Now you're ready to go ahead and just insert that zipper into the side seam. If you need extra help with inserting invisible zippers, especially into side seams, I go really in depth in one of my videos. So I'm just gonna link that in a card on top of the screen and down below. Now that I've inserted my invisible zipper, I'm just going to check the waistline to make sure it matches up and the neckline to make sure that matches up as well. Now we can just sew down the rest of that side seam and trim off the excess zipper. Moving on to the facing, I'm going to serge around the bottom of that facing just to prep it for later. Now we're going to create the straps. First, I'm going to show you how to create these regular rectangular straps first. This is for the crisscross design, and then I'll show you the halter bow. So first, just fold your straps right sides together and sew along the long edge. Then I'm just going to trim that down. I'm choosing to use some pinking shears so that it doesn't end up fraying. Now just go ahead and flip that whole strap inside out. I'm going to use a lube turner. I think it is an, a great investment. It makes your life so much easier, but if you don't have a specialized like lube turner or spaghetti strap turner of some sort, you can use the safety pin method. If you wanna create the halter with a big bow, this is gonna be a little different, but still relatively easily. First off, you're gonna place your pieces right sides together and you're going to sew along the edge, but you're going to leave a hole at the skinny edge and you're gonna leave a small hole also at the very bottom slanted edge. So just go ahead and sew that. And after that, I'm again going to trim down the excess seam allowance using some pinking shears. And then again, I'm just going to turn everything right side out using my loop turner. Then lastly, I'm just going to stitch close that opening we left in that slanted edge earlier. Now we're gonna place the straps at the front bodice right where those two very pointy edges are. You're going to make sure that the strap lines up straight on with that pointed edge. You wanna make sure that it's not a little bit off kilter, otherwise it will hang weird when it's on your body. Then just place the facing right sides together with the bodice, making sure those straps are in between. And then you're gonna pin and sew all the way around. Now switching over to this pink fabric, I'm going to be doing a crisscross back design for this so that you know how to do it. Again, place it directly on with those pointy edges on the front bodice. But for the back, you want to cross it over to the other side. And very important, you wanna make sure that this strap is not at all twisted. So when it's on your body, it's gonna lay nice and flat. And so I have a little hack to help you make sure you don't twist it if you're stressed out and don't trust yourself. So find your notch and then take your strap and place it near your notch. Now you're gonna make sure the strap is laying flat against the ground. Then just gently move it backwards and then flip it up and place it against the notch. And this way you should not have any twisting happening. Now we're ready again to place the facing against the bodice right sides together and making sure those straps are in between the two layers. Your facing and your bodice should be pinned up all the way around except for where that facing was surged earlier. So it's gonna go all the way around the neckline and then also right where the zipper is. You're gonna pin that facing down and then you're going to sew it and then serge it. But this is optional. When I actually get to that center front seam where the cowl neck is actually going to be, I'm gonna switch over to a tiny zigzag stitch so the fabric is able to stretch and drape a little bit better. So let's talk through the seam because it's pretty important. It's the focal point of the dress. First, I'm sewing up 
the side seam where the zipper is. I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance there. Then for the main neckline, I'm switching back to my normal half inch seam allowance with my regular straight stitch, sewing all the way up until I hit the front strap. When I hit the front strap, I'm actually going to pivot my work so that I sew perpendicular to the way the strap is going. Then once I get over that strap, I can switch back to following the raw edge and go back with half inch seam allowance. And like I said, for the front neckline, I'm actually going to use a small zigzag stitch just so this cowl can drape a little bit nicer, but totally not necessary. Then just pink or serge your edges, just finish them somehow. Now we're gonna move on to understitching. So to understitch, you have the body of the dress on the left, the facing on the right, and the seam allowance underneath pointed towards the facing. You're gonna just sew right really close to that neckline seam on the facing side, making sure to catch the seam allowance underneath. I'm gonna sew about an eighth of an inch away from that seam. And all this does is make sure that the facing is not going to roll out while you're wearing it. You're also not going to be able to sew a continuous line on this neckline for the understitching just because you can't understitch around a corner. But I am also going to continue with that small zigzag stitch for the understitching on the front neckline. Then after that, just give your whole neckline a good press so that everything's crisp. All right, and congratulations, we have made it to the final step, which is hemming. Please, 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 before you hem this, make sure you try it on and see if you need to shorten it even more before you hem it, okay? Now, I like to give myself one inch seam allowance, so you could either turn it and press it twice at half an inch and then stitch it down, but a rolled hem is actually going to look a lot nicer and it's gonna be a lot easier for something like this dress, which has a super curved hem. So I'm gonna show you how to do a rolled hem if you don't have a rolled hem foot. And I actually like doing this method more anyways. So I've already pressed my hem allowance up one inch. Then I'm gonna bring it over to my sewing machine and sew very, very close to that edge. I'm gonna sew one eighth of an inch away from that edge and make sure you are not pulling the hem as you do this. Next, grab your scissors and trim off that excess hem allowance. You wanna trim about one eighth of an inch away from the line that you just sewed. Now just fold this hem up one more time and then bring it over to your iron to press that in place so it makes it easier when you sew it. And then just bring that over to your sewing machine and top stitch that down. And that is how you get a really clean edge on a really curved hem. And then a few optional bits to make your garment a little bit more professional. So I like to tack down the facing at the side seam just so that stays in place while you're wearing the garment. And then the next bit is to add a hook and eye closure at the top of your zipper. And then after that, that is everything. You are done and you have yourself a new dress. All right guys, so that is how you create this cowl dress. Let me know which version you're going to be creating. Mini, midi, maxi, halter, halter bow, crisscross. Let me know down below and let me know what the occasion is. Are you doing it for prom? You doing it for homecoming? You doing it for a black tie event? Let me know. If you like this video, feel free to give me a thumbs up because it is the easiest way to support your favorite creators for free. Also feel free to follow me on Instagram and TikTok. My handle is Kiana Bonolo. And do not forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell, especially if you do not want to miss out on those discount codes I give. And speaking of discount codes, don't forget that the discount code for this pattern will expire tomorrow at midnight Eastern time. Anyways, I think that is everything. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.